Hello and welcome to a case of Danish goodness on the edge. So what we have here is the Kershaw capsule, a capsule with a K in this particular case. Um, but what is a capsule generally? Well, it is a small case or container. Uh, it can also be a tough sheath or membro membrane that <laughs> encloses an organ or structure in the body, like the kidney or a synovial joint. So that's if you want to use it in its medical um, <laughs> its medical application um, and the Danish um, nonsense I was on about what is that well it's not nonsense it is a Danish designer so this is a knife that has been designed by Jens Anso or Jens Anso I suppose you would probably pronounce it um, in Danish uh, and to quote him he says he likes to design knives um, in inverted commas beauty simplicity and purpose driven design and I think this firmly falls into that uh, category. So a little bit about um, Jens, uh, founded Anso of Denmark in 2001, but has been making knives since 1988 and apparently made his first knife um, out of a big file. Uh, and he also says his knowledge comes from reading books and magazines uh, about knife making and corresponding without, uh, not without, with <laughs> knife makers and through trial and error. Um, and I suppose what helps uh, inform his design um, is the fact that he has a master's degree in industrial design. Uh, and uh, another one of his passions um, just makes me like the man even more is shooting handguns. Um, so he says that is one of his passions and it helps him to relax. He sees it as almost a type of meditation. Uh, changes your state of mind, makes you relax and focus on something else. And um, yeah, I absolutely agree with the man on that score. Right, guys, now with all of that um, done, I'm going to be doing the usual uh, materials, dimensions, and weight, and then dive into design and attributes of this interesting little knife. Right, so let's get cracking. So this is a budget blade steel, um, not atypical of uh, Kershaw, I suppose, on their more budget side of their knives anyway. Um, but this is 8CR13 MOV. The handle, and I suppose we could call it scales, and I'll speak a little bit about the construction later on, but the handle is a glass-filled nylon. Then we have liners inside there, or maybe we should call them rails, um, and that is stainless steel, and then the rest of the hardware pretty much uh, stainless steel. So the screws are stainless steel. The best I can tell that little button is um, stainless steel as well, and we've got a stainless steel clip. Right, and the screws are Torx, by the way, on the knife. Right, so um, dimensions and weight. So we've got a blade length of 4.8 centimeters, and that's 1.9 inches. Blade thickness is uh, 2.75 millimeters, and that's 0.108 inches. Handle thickness is uh, 10.4 millimeters, and that's 0.41 inches. Close length of the knife is uh, 83 millimeters, and that's 3. 0.25 inches. Overall length of the knife is uh, 127 millimeters and that's 5 inches. And then weight and as I always do I've got Kershaw's stated weights and then we'll just check that against my skull. Let's get that all sorted out and lined up and cranked up and let's have a look see what we get. What are we on? We're on gram. So let's see how it stacks up on my skull. I get 58 grams, they got 57 grams, I think that is close enough, and let's see how that looks in ounces, uh, 2 ounces, bang on, with what Kershaw say, right, so there we go, that's all of the hard stuff out of the way, now let's have a look a little bit at the knife, so you saw me open and close the knife, and I guess one can best describe this as a utility knife, sort of like a box cutter, um, small and discreet little um, box cutter, and I suppose you can also describe it as an out the front, a manual out the front knife, so let's start with the specifics, uh, let's start uh, speaking about the blade. So we've got a spear point blade, a tiny little spear point blade, um, flat grind on the main grind and that is in a stone wash finish. Neat little edge on this, 
uh, knife, not particularly sharp, or sharp enough, but it sort of does that half cut, half tear sort of job um, on paper. So, but easy enough, well, easy enough to touch that up. I say easy enough. Yeah, we're not given a sharpening tool um, behind that edge. Uh, and then we've got, you can see, we've got a little bit of jimping on the spine of the blade as well. And I'll show you how that works when I get the knife into my uh, hands. Right, what else do I need to speak about on the blade? Probably just about it. You can see um, it being a sp spear point there. We've got a massive um, swedge running along the back of the knife. Right, general shape, very sort of squared off shape um, to this knife, but attractive uh, nonetheless. Um, the general sort of shape and finishes of that, so you can see molded into uh, that, uh, what did I say, glass filled nylon. We've got these little shapes running molded or machined, I suppose molded because it is um, glass reinforced nylon. So that looks very good, carries that sort of angular theme onto the surface of that handle. That does make it look um, very, very interesting. A little bit of jumping on the front and back. I don't know which it is, I suppose. Well, uh, that'll be determined on how you hold. <laughs> Angle, obviously, but front and back, you've got a little bit of jumping that aids in getting a good grip on that handle. But then you can see that those little interesting shapes that have been molded um, into that handle, you can see that that is carried on onto the frame on the inside as well. Let's just open it so that that maybe becomes a little more obvious. You can see on that frame, we've also got a little bit of machining that carries on um, the theme of those angles and shapes. And then that carries on onto the blue anodized little button as well again the same sort of design theme going on there and then uh, flip it around and look at the pocket clip and you can see once again the shapes reflected in that pocket clip as well so it is tip up carry no it isn't <laughs> I'm so used to saying tip up it is tip down carry in this case but it's kind of what uh, the only thing that uh, possibly makes sense on this knife is to carry it that way i suppose you could do tip up if the clip was that side but it seems to make more sense to me to have the clip um, on the side not reversible and that makes perfect sense because if it was reversible the clip would cover the little mechanism to open and close the blade then at the back of the handle, you can see a little lanyard attachment. And once again, the sort of shape of that reflects the general shapes on the rest of the handle uh, as well. You see a little bit of a hand guard in the front. Let's get that blade open again. We've got a little bit of a hand guard that is happening uh, towards the blade on the handle. And then a similar shape towards the back of the handle as well. Torque screws on this, by the way, so easy enough to get into this knife if you do want to clean it. If any muck gets on the inside there, easy enough to open that and get inside there and give it a good deep clean. Um, so let's have a look at the construction before I speak about action of the knife. Um, so you can see we've got the, it's sort of this uh, layered laminated type construction. So we've got the scales, I'm going to call them scales. We've got the glass reinforced nylon scales on either side. And then in between, we've got the same thing, the glass reinforced nylon, but in blue. And that looks very tidy, a nice little design touch um, on that as well. Uh, and then the frame on the inside. Um, so not, not dissimilar to a typical uh, utility knife or box cutter. You've got that little frame and that's obviously where the mechanism slides um, as you're opening and closing the blade. But if you look at that on the back, you can kind of see how that is constructed. What's the best way to hold it? I suppose sort of like that. So you can see the, the stainless steel plate, sort of a double layer of plates on that side, on the mechanism side, and then a single stainless steel plate on the other side. And that very, very sturdy construction. The action on the knife, by the way, with that construction is really good. A little bit of a fidget toy. <laughs> it is absolutely smooth when you open and close it. And it works the same as what a box cutter would work. So when the blade is in its closed position, um, that little button, that little sliding button, sits in a sort of raised position you push that in slightly that's what releases the blade unlocks the blade and then you slide that forward and as i slide it forward you'll see when it gets to its open position how that button pops up again there we go and that's what locks the blade then in its open position and if you look on the inside there you can see that little circle 
cut into the the well there's the that slot that the the blade and the button sort of slides along and then the little the little circular um shape in the back on that frame there and that's where the uh, that button and blade obviously locks in its closed position so it's the same thing you slide it closed uh, and when it gets to that little circle cut into that frame you can see the button clips up and that's what locks it into its closed position so the action as i said really good and that does work well uh, and works the same way again i'm going to say it as a utility knife or a box cutter little bit of blade play on it but it sort of comes with the territory with this kind of construction of knife um, so I don't think that is a manufacturing fault it just that's sort of with this construction you can expect that it's nothing alarming nothing disconcerting um, it does feel pretty sturdy in there then in my hands so if I get my hands around it that's what it looks like in my medium-sized hands I've mentioned in other reviews that I wear a large glove and you can see that those three fingers generally really fall into that shape sort of between those two hand guards if I can call them that um, but that does feel very comfortable and then you've got the jimping on the spine of the blade that I spoke about a little earlier on and your thumb very naturally falls into position there so it is a very small knife but it does feel very secure in your hand um, and does feel very very usable if you want to do a little bit of that fine work or get the knife uh, if it uh, suits the job to get the knife in your hand like that that also feels um, pretty comfortable um, and even if you do put pressure on that button uh, it's not easily going to slide but you probably best to keep your finger off that I suppose it could fold in not gonna hurt you because it just slides back into the handle but uh, that's what it looks like if you're using the knife sort of like that so in terms of design and concept um, I really do like this it is very small it is nicely made nicely designed uh, you know you can see that a good designer has had his hands on this um, Jens and so and I do tend to like his other designs of knives as well I've got a, a couple of Boker knives designed by Jens and so and I really do like those but this very very different to his other um, his other <laughs> knives but but still uh, you know a nice little bit of a design flair to what is I suppose a little bit more of an expensive well, it's not an expensive knife but a bit more expensive than your standard box cutter but a reusable box cutter and one that you can resharpen um, <laughs> I really do actually like this knife but similar in concept I suppose to the uh, Civivi Mandate which is also sort of that although a, a longer sort of maybe more typically sized box cutter and in that particular case you can actually change the blades but similar in concept to that a little bit more of a an upmarket and uh, and reusable box cutter one that you can sort of um, keep for I suppose a very very long time um, but so before I carry on waffling let me just lay this down here and do the usual and that's just to give my uh, gratitude to blades and triggers so this is a knife that um, was supplied by blades and triggers for me to look over I really do appreciate their ongoing support of the channel so check this out and other Kershaw knives and other brands of knives and other tactical goodies on their website uh, and that is BNT online and let me just tell you I like the knife so much that it has actually joined the collection um, it is one of those knives that I think you it's small enough that you can fit it in anywhere any pocket uh, it's also one of those knives that you can you know, leave in the car leave in the glove box or throw into your range bag um, and I suppose um, if you're a lady uh, you can throw into your handbag um, <laughs> if you're a man and you carry a handbag well, I suppose you can as well um, let's not uh, carry on down that route uh, so, but yeah a knife that I really do like and I suppose it speaks volumes about the fact that um, you know I got it I got it home to review it and look over it for a few days and sort of fell for it and like I say it is now um, my knife <laughs> so, there it is I think a nice idea and very well executed and very well made by uh, Kershaw as well so what does that really leave me to do is size comparisons um, so what I've done is I've brought a couple of really small knives out um, to give you a little bit of a view of that so first one I've got is the uh, uh, Medford Der Hund a very very small knife but you can see that the uh, Kershaw capsule even smaller than that right so that's the Der Hund and then I've got um, 
a knife from uh, one of Jens's compatriots, uh, and this is the Vox design. Yes, but Vox, that's the Sulu. Now, the small knife give you a little bit of a sense of that too. Right, uh, and then I suppose the knife that I've got in my collection that is closest to this in terms of size is this little um, oddity. <laughs> oddity that I really do like and that is the um, also Medford uh, knife and tool and that is the chunky monkey but you can see those two are very very similarly sized knives that's a lot more uh, practical a good little tool a good little user I think the uh, Kershaw capsule um, <laughs> what, is to, uh, what a show that I do love this chunky little thing um, even though it's not the most practical knife out glad it's in the collection right now let me use the knives that I usually know. Here's another little knife that I actually brought in before I do the usual knives. And this is the Spyderco Ambitious, possibly a small knife that a lot of people will know and give you a little bit of a sense of that as well. Right, now I will use the knives that I usually use, or some of them anyway. Um, so this one that I always use, because I think a lot of people will know this knife, and that is the Spyderco PM3, the smaller version, give you some scale there. And then, uh, is it on my desk here? Yeah, a whole bunch of knives on my desk here. Um, so this, the Spyderco Manix 2, just for scale, right, there's that. And then the last one that I'll use, that I always do say when I bring it out, um, I use because it's been out for so long, and if you like knives and no knives, you'll probably know that knife, and that is the Benchmade Mini Barrage. Right, and I think that is it for size comparison. So, summarize my thoughts of the knife. Well, the fact that I bought it, um, I think that says it all. I, I think a, a really good idea. I do like this as a concept. Um, I've had the Civivi mandate in my hands, and I think that is also a nice concept. This, uh, quite a bit smaller and not an interchangeable blade, but um, I think very well executed. A nice idea, well executed, nice little design touches on it as well that just adds that a little bit of extra pleasure I suppose to what is essentially a utility knife or box cutter um, but yeah I really do like the knife um, and not particularly expensive either so you know one of Kershaw's sort of budget type knives but uh, nicely made nevertheless so guys uh, you know if that sort of thing interests you I do recommend it check it out it might be just that extra little knife that little backup knife or the knife that you can carry on uh, carry with you when you can't carry anything bigger um, but uh, yeah again I'm going to say it I really do like it um, and I think that is just about all I have to say about that so the only thing um, really left for me to do oh by the way I did want to mention that obviously because of this construction it is completely ambi um, just the nature of a box cutter does make it ambi it isn't left or right um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't give an advantage, I suppose, what I'm trying to say, to uh, a lefty or a righty. It can be equally well used either way. Right, now I have said everything that I wanted to say. And all that's really left for me to do is to thank you for joining me. Always really do appreciate it when you do. Would equally appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified every time I release a new video. Because as I really, as I really do say, as I always do say, I really would love you to join me more often. And as I've been adding. Guys, if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. It does help with the algorithms. And other than that, you go well and God bless.